You can breathe, but we can still hear you. All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to ODNT Spotlight. My name is Steve DeWinter, your host, and we have with us a wonderful author guest who is also a noted expert in her field, and her name is uh, Ava hey. Gordon. Boy, I almost missed it up there. Ava Gordon, and she is a genre-bending paranormal fantasy author, and she has written several series that she has begun starting with the After the Bane series, which is Apocalyptic Moon and Raven Moon, and there are werewolves in these stories in this universe. She also has another series that she has done. Uh, this is a no novella series, and the Alpha Wolf's Pet, starting with Hidden, moving on to Hunted, and then Kept, which she's also boxed together in a box set for a great reasonable price on Kindle. So definitely check that out in the ebook where you can get all three books in one low price for that. Mm -hmm. also features werewolves in this universe. She has another series that she's begun, uh, starting with Lycan Gladiator. Um, and this is in her Wolf Maiden saga. And this is the first book in a probably a 50 book saga. Who knows? We'll talk to her about that. And again, this one also stars werewolves in it. She also has a steampunk novel uh, dealing with uh, golems and everything, and there are some werewolves in it, while not the feature of the story. She cannot let herself do a story without her <laughs> expertise in it. And you can hear her giggling in the background and everything. And then she also has a spin-off to her Alpha Wolf's pet called, oh, nope, we're not there yet. We also have her fantasy novel, Stone of the Tenth Realm, which is a historical fantasy, but doesn't go as far back as we normally think when we talk about historical fantasy novels. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And of course, there are some werewolves in this one too. And then her spin-off series from the Alpha Wolf's Pet, her new series coming out in 2016, the Team Grey Wolf series starting with Slade. And we'll definitely talk about that. And I want to talk to her also about that logo that she has on there. So let's go ahead and let's switch on over and meet the wonderful Ava Gordon. Hello, Ava. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Uh, welcome to ODNT, where we get to shine the spotlight on you. Yay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's talk about your different series here. So what was the first series that you wrote? Actually, um, the first book, my epic fantasy, uh, The Stone of the Tenth Realm, was my first book. And it was first published, I think it was 2012, uh, Small British Press all English, British English, you know, uh, in it. And uh, then that little publishing company folded. So I kind of ignored the book for a long time, put it aside, got my rights back. Then, um, and then I tried to get it published, you know, with big New Yorker. Right. But um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that didn't work out, but um, Anyway, so I decided why not publish it? It's one of my favorite stories. And, uh, you know, I do have book two in draft form. I started it a while back. Ooh, exciting. And so, um, yeah. So that one's called Alchemist of the uh, Tenth Realm. Oh, so nice. So I thought, well, so I, I self-published it. And uh, the copy, um, print copies on Create Space. And uh, so far it's got 24 five-star reviews on Amazon. So it's good. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we know it's good now. It's, it's long. It's it's huge. It's, I mean, like... It's six, epic six, fantasy. Yeah, it's an epic fantasy. So it's kind of small. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. So so that's the, technically the first one. And then, like in Gladiator, um, this, this series, the Wolf Maiden Saga, I actually wrote several books in that series. And uh, worked with a small press. Things didn't work out. Uh, so I got my rights back, finally, thanks to the help of my agent. Oh, good. And so there's several other books in this series. But um, uh, Corvallis Press published this one. And we decided, let's make it chronological. So we're starting with Ancient Rome. And the next one takes place during um, King Arthur's time. And that one hasn't been published yet. Okay. So, and then the one after that is... Uh, Beast Warrior, which is, takes place during the Viking era. So oh. those are those are written, but we need to revise them and put them out again. Right, and they had been previously published. Right, but now they're they're pulled and 
and now you're going to re-release them out. Re-release them, right. Excellent, with all brilliant new covers. Yeah, right, yeah. Sexier covers. <laughs> right. And then your next series that you did, uh, you also had uh, After the Bane mm -hmm. series, which is kind of your uh, apocalyptic horror, but with vampires and werewolves. Well, no vampires. Oh, no vampires in that one? Oh, the okay. only dead people in there are the zombies. Zombies, that's what I was thinking of, the zombies. I knew there was yeah. something other than werewolves in there. Right, yeah. So, and, and, so. Um, and that one's a paranormal romance, dystopian um, elements. It's, it's got just about everything and a little humor. I love adding humor. And so. I think humor makes horror so much better. Yeah, it does. Yeah, because people do stupid things, right? You open the door when you hear like scratching and stuff like that. You know, you walk into an empty room that you know the killer is, and you go, "Bobby, is that you?" Is that and you, you keep walking yeah. in, and the the right. flashlight goes out, and you're yeah. like, "Oh well, I'll keep going in." Yeah, yeah. You hear the shuffling of feet. You know they're zombies. Don't open the door. So, <laughs> exactly. That sort of thing. They're not bringing pizza. Yeah, and that one was published by the Wild Rose Press. Okay. And then Amazon Encore noticed it, and they decided to buy out my contract. Oh, and now they have it exclusively on Amazon, and it's doing really well um, on Kindle Unlimited, especially since it's free for members. For Yep, for the people in the uh, Kindle Unlimited. So suddenly my ranks are like really doing well because of... Well, and you have the power of Amazon behind you now that you're an official Amazon author. Right. You know, within their their publishing group, which is great. So, congratulations mm -hmm. on getting Thanks. noticed by the big yeah, song. I got noticed. I think it's a sixty-one reviews I got on Apocalyptic Moon, which really surprised me because I thought, who's gonna want to read <laughs> this sort of? This is a fun story to write, but are people really gonna read? The more fun about? you had writing it, the more fun we have reading it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> That always translates, because if you're slogging through and going, this is a horrible story, but let me just get it out, no one's going to like that story. No, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to enjoy it. Yeah, I do. And then you also have uh, the one we talked about with uh, The Stone of the Tenth Realm, which was your mm -hmm. first book that you right. did a long time ago, and now you've since re-released mm -hmm. out. It in American English rather than British English. So we stripped all the U's out of color and... <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised how many people, the first time I published it, how many people wrote saying you misspelled color and, you know, you miss, you didn't spell pajamas correctly. It's like, no, you, you live in the wrong part of the world. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> right. Wow, yeah, that's very, very interesting mm -hmm. that the people are going to, oh, you misspelled it. No, no, yeah. that's, that, there's other places, there's other ways to spell that. Right, yeah. And so uh, the Stone of the Tenth Realm, while that's historical fantasy, it doesn't mm -hmm. go all the way back to 1400s and, you know, or the 12th century, you mm -hmm. know, England that we think of. You go back to World War II. Right. Which is very interesting. And so you've got this parallel realm. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about uh, the Stone of the Tenth Realm. Okay, the Stone of the Tenth Realm is basically um, the story of um, Sophie Katz, who's in Prague during the start of the Second War. The Nazis invade, she's imprisoned along with her family in you know, Treblinka, or Terezan. And um, her grandfather, who's a Kabbalistic rabbi, um, has been told that the angel of death is coming to get her. And so he comes back from the other side to help her escape and uh, gives her two stones. The gray stone will take you to a world where humanity is really advanced, you know, and they're practically like the Borg. You know, oh, oh, very advanced. Very advanced. There's no, um, no love, no religion, but, you know, it's, no one's getting killed, I guess. But it's still not a good place. It's not a good place, and you'll find <laughs> out later. Giving up so much, right? And then there's a tenth realm, which is a magical realm, and she's like, hmm, I, because she's a scientist, she's a chemistry student, and um, so she doesn't believe in any magic at all. So um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, surprise, surprise. So she escapes 
first to Prague at the Altnischule, which is the uh, synagogue where the Gollum supposedly lived, the uh -huh. Gollum of legend. Um, the Gollum was this creature that Rabbi Lowe in the 1500s um, brought to life to help protect the Jews from, you know, uh, pogroms and that sort of thing. So supposedly his body is still there. And um, anyway, so she escapes there and then she's, um, I don't want to do spoilers. But right, not too much. Guess where she ends up, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And she yeah. gets some schooled in uh, science is real, but so is magic. Right, and she finds out that on the other side, on the tenth realm, in the tenth realm, she's an alchemist. And at first, she doesn't believe it, you know, until you know a dwarf has to prove to her that she could turn lead into gold. And she's like, "No, I can't do that. That's not possible." Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and then of course she meets, uh, you know, another. She she falls into this area called the bestiary, which is really dangerous. But she meets, you know, her uh, her mate. But again, I don't want to do spoilers, but, you know, another, you know, another one of those werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> and so werewolves, werewolves play a part in every one of your stories, even though you've written, what is it? One, two, three, four, I'm going to get away from them pretty soon, but yeah. Five different universes. Oh, you're starting to break free from the werewolves. Well, I'm, I'm working on a side. I'm also doing a science fiction, but that's another story. <laughs> ah, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Sci-fi is always yeah, fun. I do love... The reason I love werewolves so much is that, um, you know, my background's in zoology, you know, and I taught biology, and I spent, I volunteered at a wolf sanctuary, and, uh, you know, I took my son, it was a summer, and we went to Oregon, and um, we stayed in the trailer, the only two people in this huge trailer, in this trailer, in this huge wolf sanctuary, over 36 wolves. Ooh. And we were sound asleep, then around 1 o'clock in the morning, they start howling. You know, oh. All 36 of them or so. Wolf email. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so my son goes, hmm, what if they're werewolves? <laughs> well, needless to say, I didn't sleep well that night. <laughs> <laughs> I found a hatchet, and I slept with that. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. Is it a so silver I'll hatchet? <laughs> Yeah. So ever since that, you know, and then I really got into werewolf lore, and then I, I always loved werewolf horror movies. And then I started thinking, well, what if you make a werewolf like a romantic figure? And I wasn't the only one. So I thought I was the only one who came up with that idea. But then, you know, <laughs> look around. Everybody's writing They're that. everywhere. They're everywhere. Those <laughs> werewolf lovers, you know. But they're going under the, uh, the name of Shifter. Shifter, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, shifter, yeah. So I guess that's more politically correct these days. That's the new term. Well, because then it can be anything, you know. Yeah. I, I'm a wear snail. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, in um, in my After the Bane series, I have raven shifters and bear shifters. And uh, I especially love raven shifters. So, cause, um, Ravens are cool. Yeah, that's what I would be if I were a shifter. I'd become a raven. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And I always think about, you know... I have proof of that. So. Oh, excellent. Here's my raven puppet. Oh, <laughs> I don't know where to put him. <laughs> there he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ray from uh, Raven Moon, which is book two in my After the Bane series. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, because I liked the title for that, Raven Moon. I'm like, ooh, mm -hmm. neat. And then, of course, your website is ravenauthor.com. Right. And everything. And for those of you who are watching this, and if you're watching this embedded in another website, just click the little link down there that says watch on YouTube. And then you can see all the descriptions down below. I've got Ava's uh, both Amazon US and Amazon UK links here, as well as connecting with her. I've got her website, her Facebook, her Twitter, her Goodreads, her Wattpad, her Pinterest, her wow. Triber, her <laughs> blog, all yeah. sorts of stuff. So there's many, many ways to connect with Ava. And, you know, I highly suggest also she has a mailing list exactly. where you can find out because she's got five series already and she's just spilled the guts that she's working on a sixth one. Right. <laughs> and a sci-fi series to boot and everything. So I highly suggest going to her website, uh, ravenauthor.com, and signing up for her mailing list there right. so that you can be alerted as the next books come out. Not only that, but I'm running a campaign um... – if you join my mailing list by October 31st, which is Halloween. Ooh, we got 15 more holiday, days. 
Then um, I'm going to pick a winner on November 1st to win a $10 Amazon gift certificate. It's not oh. a big deal, but it's, you know. You can get anything on Amazon. Yeah, that's right. All my books. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So. so you really have researched werewolves to the point where you are now considered a world-renowned expert <laughs> in werewolves. Well, you, you in my run home. online workshops for uh, Romance Writers of America. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, presentations at libraries. I al I just did a presentation at the Wiley Library on um, the animals of Game of Thrones series. So, um, and that's, so I had to talk about the wolves from their point of view, the dire wolves, and then the ravens and that sort of thing. So that was, so that was kind of fun. So. So you're able to use your real world experience of zoology and mm -hmm. say, Here's how let here's how it happens in the real world, and here's what, right. how we can then shift that to and notice how I use the word shift, shift mm -hmm. that into the fictional worlds. Right, because there's all sorts of different ways to become a werewolf. So, uh, no two authors are going to write the same werewolf story. I mean, you can become a werewolf by wearing a, a belt, a magical belt, or drinking water out of a, a pool, a pool where a there was a wolf print or a ah. curse or being bitten, which is the Hollywood one. Right. That's the one we all know. And the moon and all that. So there's, um, and in my Alpha Wolf's pet series and Team Grey Wolf, my wolves are born wolves first. And then, be, and then they get bitten by an alpha father who's human. And then ah. they become um, human. So, so it's that's the like, reverse. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Uh, man bites dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So that's something I wanted to experiment with. What would it be like to be a wolf for the first three years of your life? Because a wolf reaches adulthood, you know, around two, just like your typical dog. Or three, right, right. You know? And then at three, um, they undergo something called a change, which is a really, after being bitten, it's a really painful process. And a lot of them don't make it. Ooh. So and usually the alphas and the betas make it, but um, the omegas and the runt, well, the runts definitely don't make it, with the exception of Cricket, who's from the next book, Slate. She's the only runt that's ever, un you know, survived the change. Oh, so very special. Yeah, very special. So, but that was kind of fun. So, so you've, uh, even though you've written five different series in different universes that all do werewolves, each mm -hmm. one is, they become werewolves differently. Differently, yeah. Most of my werewolves are um, genetic, you know, where, you know, you're just a fat, you come from a long line of werewolves. So um, the Stone of the Tenth Realm, that werewolf, Logan, he's cursed. So he was cursed by a druid. So um, he's more of the old horror style werewolf, you know. Right. So you, you, went and you, you, you did your research on werewolves and said there's all these different ways to become a werewolf. Yeah. But rather right. than saying, well, let me pick one, you're like, I'll pick them all. Yeah, I want them all. It's, it's <laughs> I want to explore for one of them. Yeah. yeah, you want to explore all the options. Right. Yeah. And I think that's just brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Why not? It's why like, not? Yeah. So, but, um, and I don't know how many people have written stories about what wolves that are are lichens that are wolves first and then become people but that I'm is sure something are. new i have not heard that that, right. that is a good concept but now that everyone's going to see this on youtube they're well, we're going to see in <laughs> okay. about a year 10 more stories about that yeah but you saw it here first folks ava gordon started that trend <laughs> yeah right yeah i thought i started the coloring book trend too because i started coloring um books to kind of relax and then I went on Facebook and I noticed that that's a trend and I didn't know. <laughs> People are already doing it. <laughs> I'm already doing it, yeah. So. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So I have gone over everything here that uh, I had on my list. So is there anything else that you wanted to talk about for any of your series? Uh, dive more deeply into any of the series that we have here that you want to let people know about. Huh, let's see. Um, well, I wish. Um, well, I'm working on um, in the After the Bane series. I am working on book three, 
Um, that one's going to be called Blood of the Moon. Ooh, and, nice. Uh, yeah, and so uh, last, I don't want to do spoilers, but in book two, um, I always have a, um, a good ending. I don't like cliffhangers too much. So that book two ended, but it also ended with, okay, well, these zombies are all migrating from Southern California heading in our direction. And there's all all sorts of evil people out there still. There's the tankers. The tankers are people to go around, um, af- kind of like The Walking Dead, you see evil people go around killing, you know, people that are still alive, right. and hunting them or eating them or whatever. And then we've got the kindred, which are werewolf hunters. So even though they go around killing zombies, their goal is still to get rid of werewolves. <laughs> And then we have the Benedanti werewolves, which are evil because they are, um, they were created to kill all the witches in, in Europe. Oh, so, wow. And my main character, um, Dora, she's a witch. So, so they're still around. So all these, they're Nobody's all these getting people. along. No one's getting along. <laughs> Plus you have zombies. So, so you yeah. pretty much have decided no cliffhangers for your stories. No, not really. I leave questions like, well, what will happen next? I mean, you can, like on my um, Alpha Wolf's Pet series, you know, the main character is being chased by the Russian mob. And, you know, and in book one, she kind of figures out that her um, boyfriend is a werewolf. And has got, in order for her to go out with him, she's got to, you know, follow these rules. And then in the next book... <laughs> It get you know we get closer into um, you know their relationship and how the pack views that you know he's, she's a human and all that and then in book three uh, we find out more about the Russian mob and 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 so and that one ends in book three and um, people are happy that it ends there and they're like yay it's done and <laughs> but so, it's not too cliffhangery I hope <laughs> okay yeah it's not like you didn't finish the story and you just said ha ha you gotta wait for the next book. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, the, I, you know, I'm a big, I'm not a big proponent of cliffhangers per se, right. but I do like the, but wait, there's more. There's more, right. There's uh-huh. more. Questions you know, like... it's not so wrapped up and tight that there's nothing else that could possibly happen. Right. Like but, in book one, you know, it's like, well, we know she escaped the Russian mob and then at the end she's safe, but are they going to come back? You know, are they going to find her anyway? So, right. Yeah. And as action packed, and fantasy and werewolves and everything these books sounds you still have a pretty solid romantic element right i love the romantic elements yeah because that's all part of life you know you you have a job you have a love interest you have hobbies you know that's all part of life excellent and do you give your characters uh happily ever afters yes okay (laughs) no spoilers there so technically i'm a true romantic i'm like it's not a love story where she dies of cancer or anything like that yeah i don't know why that movie was called love story or you know based off the book she died that's not a love story that's not a that's That's a horrible horrible story it's horrible yeah (laughs) so yeah no there's nothing worse than reading falling in love with two characters who fall in love with each other and then one of them are both Romeo and Juliet or whatever they both tie. I don't like that. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> awful. Yeah, I'm with you. I like to make sure that my characters get what they want. Right. Yeah. And you know, and maybe there's outside influences that are gonna come in and just shake everything up, but right. at least for now they got it. <laughs> right. And and my paranormal romance is, you know, it's geared more for adults. You know, it's got uh, scenes for adults, violence, sex, you name it. Uh, the Stone of the Tenth Realm and Hand of Miriam, I mean, there's some, there's romance, but it's not, you know, I, I would think a young adult could read that. No, very nice, very nice. So. Okay, so I've also uh, exhausted my additional questions I had from talking okay. with you so. and everything. So is there a, so what's next from you? You said that you're working on a science fiction you're, yeah. You're, and then are are you are you uh, sure that there are going to be no werewolves in that story? Positive, because it's it takes place in the future, dystopian world, and it's just based on humans. So, excellent, excellent. So, what was your inspiration for writing a story for the Stone of the Tenth Realm? 
What was your inspiration for setting it in World War II, picking that as your time period? Okay, my inspiration actually was a book called Hasidic Tales of the Holocaust. And I found this book interesting because there are a lot of books on the Holocaust and horrible and this and that and right. no escape, you just survived. But in this series, um, they talk about paranormal, real stories that happened, like uh, brothers coming back from the dead and guiding, you know, their uh, relatives out, you know. To and, safety, wow. Right. There's this one story of um, this great rabbi, and he's escaping through Hungary, and um, there's Nazis there, and they they're coming and then all of a sudden these three uh horsemen they're in white horses um stop the uh, nazis from taking the people in the car and and uh the nazis go oh they salute them and all that and um so the driver assumes that oh well these three generals on this on these horses are probably you know um really important people that the Gestapo had to pay attention to. Right. And the rabbi says, no, that was my grandfather, my great grandfather and his uncle or something like that. Oh, oh, oh. So, and that was, these are all based on true stories. So right. it's interesting. And then another interesting thing about um, the Stone of the 10th realm in terms of the Gollum, um, the Altnoschul, which is in Prague, um, supposedly um, Hitler was fascinated with, you know, really um, the paranormal and all that. And so um, he sent Gestapo men to the Altnerschule to look for the Gollum. And this might be, an, this is an urban legend, but supposedly they went in and never came out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, another interesting fact is he, um, that synagogue was not destroyed for whatever reason, despite the fact that other synagogues were being destroyed. So right, that one was left alone. Yeah, so I kind of like that, and that sort of got my imagination going. Excellent, excellent. All right, so um, thank you so very much for you. joining us on ODNT and letting us shine the spotlight on you and your books. Yay. And talk so, about uh, werewolves. Always yes, fun. Yes, werewolves. So. All right, well, hey, thank you very much. So um, don't hang up on me just yet. I'm going to go okay. and switch over the screen. I'll close out the interview. And then I'll be back to you. We'll chat for a couple more Hi, minutes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. All right. So that was Ava Gordon. And those are all her wonderful, wonderful books. And right now, you have until October 31st. So if you're watching the YouTube video right now, before October 31st, 2015, you have until Halloween of this year to go in, sign up for her mailing list. And so go to ravenauthor.com, sign up for Ava's mailing list, and then you'll be put in the hat. And maybe your name will be the one picked out to win valuable, wonderful prizes of a gift card for Amazon. So once again, my name is Steve DeWinter, your host for ODNT Spotlight. Thank you very much for watching with us as we talk to wonderful Ava Gordon and uh -huh. talked about werewolves and had all sorts of fun today. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We have many more authors, artists, actors, musicians, anybody who'll come on my show, I'll have them on my show. So thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye.